Hey guys and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please remember to smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell to get alerted to all the new videos. Of course, like the videos as well if you're old or new. It's a new week. A new week. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. And Riley Opelka has just won his first clay court tournament. Now, that's not something that a lot of people thought they'd say, to be perfectly honest with you. Opelka... Isner, these types of players, you just don't really expect them to win clay court tournaments. It's the slowest surface. Their serves are still extremely potent because they're just that good at serving. But the all-round game they have is not quite maybe up to scratch with uh, what is maybe needed at times on clay courts. But I have to say something, and this is in no way a dig at John Isner because he is a phenomenal, like, talent I think and that's fair enough in saying he's, he's one of the best servers I think of all time uh, for sure uh, and he's not a slouch either when it comes to other parts of his game I think his ground tricks are okay um, his obviously volleying's good for the most part um, transition game uh, maybe not the best I think he's a phenomenal do doubles player when he volleys but volleying in doubles and volleying in singles for me is, is slightly different um, but Riley Apelka I think his other attributes are slept on. And uh, just watching the match, and then I watched the highlights again um, today, just to kind of refresh myself as well after watching it on the weekend. And Apelka, to me, is one of those players that I think because he's got such a big serve, people forget about everything else. His forehand is pretty potent. He had a lot of forehand winners, not just forehand winners from the back of the court when they were short balls, but forehand winners just from positions where you wouldn't expect him to hit a winner. Uh, also, there were forehand winners from returns. Now, those were really impressive because Isner, as I said, in line with the Palka as well, two of the best servers on tour right now. Isner serving into corners and Apelka's reading the serve fantastically getting across at times to the serve out wide on the juice side and just launching forehand return winners cross court. Didn't happen, you know, throughout the whole match in terms of like, you know, on a regular basis, but there were moments when it happened and they stick out to me because they're not the type of returns that you associate with a Pelka. You associate a return to go relatively deep, a bit more loopy, kind of maybe in the slice, uh, just get get himself kind of into that rally. He's not looking to be... Um, well, I think he is looking to be aggressive in, in fairness to him, but he's not managing to execute those types of returns as effectively as he did, I think, in the Houston final. Uh, he won Houston in straight sets, 6-3, 7-6. Six, six. I'll bring up the stats in a second as well. Um, it's mainly the serve ones, to be perfectly honest with you, and they're always going to be fantastic between the two, um, especially because, as I said, you know, the serving... Look, I mean... <laughs> In a lot of people's eyes, they are serve bots, and I can see why people say that. It was Battle of the Serve Bots in a way. Uh, there were quite a few aces sent down, but at the same time, there were also quite a few winners, and we saw a lot of uh, very interesting points where it was either Isner or Pelka at the net, and uh, you had that little dynamic, which is fantastic, or both at the net. And Pelka, I think, utilized a drop shot really effectively as well, which on clay is such an effective tool to utilize. I mean, it's one that, you know, I think if you've got a good drop shot, it definitely puts you in a good position in terms of variety on the clay. And uh, he's someone that clearly he can hold his own on his forehand. The backhand is, you know, I think for a lot of people on tour who aren't top, I don't know, five, and even some of the people that are in the top five, the backhand is their weaker side or a weakness at times. Um, Apelka has a similar thing as well however his slice is good on clay it's not of course going to have as much of an effect or be as effective but as long as he's slicing low the net and deep it'll still have some potency on this surface um, but the forehand yeah is underrated go and watch the highlights of the Houston final and you understand what I mean about the forehand uh, he it's a really really big forehand at times and he really does crunch it, and it is super effective. Um, even on this surface, he hits it with enough top spin, enough pop, 
uh, that he can hit clean winners. And at times, Isner just had to watch the ball fly past him. Uh, there was also a game when he did uh, four aces in a row. So he just cleaned up to love. Four aces done. Uh, but that was four out of the 10 aces he served on the day. So 10 aces is not, you know, it's, it's say five aces per set. That's not like a incredibly huge amount. It's, yeah, it's substantial. But for these guys, that's, you know, they could be serving 20 aces each, right? So I think obviously the surface did play a part is slower. So yeah, they're not going to get as much maybe pop as they'd expect or hope for. Gives the returners more time, no doubt. Uh, but I do also think that maybe both players have played each other a few times. Are they able to anticipate the serves better than other players? And I think Apelka is actually not a particularly bad returner. Um, I don't think he's ever going to be one of the best returners, but you know he's kind of somewhere in between. And I think that's what impressed me the most. And he is a very talented individual. He seems to continually improve, which is great to see. He'd actually only ever broken his no once uh, before this meeting. So uh, to get the break in that first set was really, really crucial. And you just felt the momentum was with him. And then he did really well on the second set to save. It was, I think, three set points. So he was 6-4 down the tie break in the second set. He clawed it back really nicely. Uh, and then again, Isna, I think, was 8-7 up, I think, uh, serving again. And, and no, uh, Pelka said, nope, I'm not going to let you have it. And I thought he did really, really well in the end, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, sorry, uh, is an all seven, six up. But, you know, it was just a really impressive performance. It was clutch at times. And Apelka, he'll be really happy with his week's work. I mean, he beat Kyrgios in the semifinals. Yes, Kyrgios was a little bit abject, I think it's fair to say. But, you know, I do think that was partly down to how well Apelka was playing as well. I think, you know, we saw that um with Kyrgios versus Sinner as well like I think if someone's playing really well against him and, and they kind of take a set off him or it just seems like you know he's kind of up against it a little bit uh he, he can also get irritated and I think the clay doesn't help in that sense because it's a slow surface and I'm pretty sure I, I saw him say it was a slow surface as well during the match uh but Apelka with a really really interesting uh tournament and I think you know kudos to him it really really impressive uh from my side uh, let's have a quick look then, so you can see here, 6376. Uh, we'll ha also have a quick look at kind of how he won Houston as well. Uh, 10 aces compared to zero double faults, which is great, 82 for Isner. First set percentage for both, just over 70%. First set points won, 75% for both as well. 58% to 52% in terms of second serve points won. So you can see it, Apel goes with a slightly better second serve points won percentage. Break point save, look at that, 8 out of 8. That's clutch. Uh, isn't a four, four out of five not bad either right but that one break point made the difference um first return points one you can see so yeah obviously interesting uh there as well but yeah i think it was he didn't blow his in away by any stretch of the imagination but i think he just had a little bit more variety to his game uh he was willing to take more risks and i think that's what to me, made the difference, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so if we go, yeah, so look, beat Kyrgios, Brower, Kruger. So, you know, I mean, to be fair, I think Kyrgios and Isner are really the ones, aren't they? Uh, the others, you kind of think, Isner actually had a much, for me, a much harder route to this final. He had Steve Johnson in the first uh, round, then TFO, then Garin. So all of those matches as well, look, you can see he dropped a set, but he managed to come through them. He had a much tougher route, to be perfectly honest with you, Apalka, with an easier one in my eyes. The only one that, of course, is, is Kyrgios. But, I mean, if Kyrgios is on form uh, and he's really up for it, then I think, yes, you know, that kind of almost nullifies all the other opponents. But he wasn't, so it just wasn't the case. Um, but, yeah, really, really impressive. Apalka gets it done. Also worth noting as well, Goffan beat Molkan as well. Um, in Marrakesh to win uh, another, well, to win an ATP tournament, which is which is good for him. For Goffan, he's a huge, huge hitter of the tennis ball, and I think he's someone who he could be very exciting. And hopefully, we see a bit more of him on tour and kind of fulfilling his potential. Uh, he, yeah, won uh, three six six three six three. So good to see him win that. And actually, he's ranked seventy four at the moment. And that's probably not. 
a fair reflection of his talent. So let's see if he can continue to rise through the ranks. Uh, that's all from me. Thanks very much, guys, for tuning in. Please remember to smash the like button and subscribe to your channel if you haven't done so already. And do check us out on Spotify, Anchor Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. We also have started a separate uh, football channel as well. So obviously just dedicated to football. It's called Quality Shot Football. Um, you can search that or you can check our community tab and I put the link for the channel on there. We're also on podcast platforms there as well for that channel. It's a separate podcast, of course, called Quality Shot Football. Uh, it's a weekly podcast. Do check it out if, that, if you're a football fan. Obviously, that's of interest. Uh, thanks very much, guys. Stay safe and well.